The universe is either eternal or it came from absolute nothing. It can't be eternal because if it was, that would cause an infinite regress. Basically, if the universe had been around forever, it would take an infinite amount of time to reach the present moment, which is impossible. It can't come from absolute nothing because from nothing, you can only get more nothing. Since the universe can't come from nothing and it can't be eternal, something outside the universe must account for its existence. The theists posit that this entity must be a timeless, immaterial, personal being called God. This is a common argument for God's existence. At first glance, there doesn't seem to be an objection to the problem of an eternal universe or a universe coming from absolute nothing. There are in fact many objections to this line of thinking. While there are many to discuss, in this video I will bring up just one. The block universe. The block universe idea comes in many names the B theory of time, the tenseless view of time, or the eternalist view of the universe. This view fits into the view that the universe is eternal. But how does it do so without violating the infinite regress? Well, with infinite regress there cannot be an infinite series of finite things. Some have raised objections to this claim, but for now we will accept the premise. So how does the block universe not violate this? Well. In the block universe, there is not an infinite series of moments. Instead, there is a finite series of moments that exist simultaneously. To explain this and how it is relevant, I need to explain how time works in the block universe. We normally think of time like a river, constantly moving and flowing, with the past being constantly in flux with the present, and when we reach the present, the past no longer exists. The future also does not yet exist because it hasn't happened yet. This is also known as the A theory of time. However, in the block universe time does not flow like a river, but is instead like a frozen river. As physicist Brian Greene puts it, under close scrutiny, the flowing river of time more closely resembles a giant block of ice, with every moment forever frozen into place. In this view, the past doesn't cease to exist because you reach the present. Instead, the past and present are both frozen in place and are both equally real. The future also exists frozen in place. It might be better to use the analogy and think of our universe as a film reel. In a film reel, we have numerous frames of moments that exist. When we shine a light on one of the frames as the film moves through the projector, we call that moment the present moment. But if you remove the film from the projector and look at all the moments together, you discover that there really is no real, objective present moment. What we call the present is basically based on our subjective experience. Instead, the entire film, including the beginning, middle, and end, are all equally real, equally existing together, and can be thought of as the eternal now. This brings us to our next point. Many theists feel that since the universe has a beginning, that this means that the universe came into existence at the beginning. However, with the block universe, this is not the case. Think back to our film analogy. Our film has a beginning to it as well, but having a beginning to the film does not mean that the film popped into existence at the beginning of the film. Also, the film has an ending. But that doesn't mean that the entire film stops existing at the end. Why this is is because all the frames of the film exist at the same time. Just because you move from one frame to the next doesn't mean that the previous frames stop existing. All the frames, including the ones you haven't reached, exist. The block universe would be the same way. The Big Bang, the beginning of our universe, wouldn't be when our universe came into existence. Instead, the Big Bang would merely be a corner of space-time. William Lane Craig, an opponent of the B-theory of time, actually describes the idea nicely. On a B-theory of time, the universe never truly comes into being at all. The whole four-dimensional space-time manifold just exists tenselessly, and the universe has a beginning only in the sense that a meter stick has a beginning prior to the first centimeter. Although the space-time manifold is intrinsically temporal and that one of its four dimensions is time, nonetheless it is extrinsically timeless in that it does not exist in an embedding hypertime but exists tenselessly, neither coming into nor going out of being. The four-dimensional space-time manifold 
is this latter since eternal. This brings us back to our first part about the universe being either eternal or coming into being out of nothing. Clearly, under this view, the universe can be eternal without violating infinite regress. Under this view, the universe exists similarly to how theists describe God existing. The universe would then be an eternal, extrinsically timeless entity that needs no cause to explain its existence. So what is the scientific evidence for the black universe? Do any scientists or philosophers support the idea? What are the objections to the black universe? I would like to save those answers for a later video. This video is mainly to expose you to the ideas about the black universe and how the natural world can account for its own existence. Do you have any questions or comments about the black universe? Please post them in the comments below or in a video response. I look forward to your replies. For more info on the black universe or on the B theory of time, please read The End of Time by Julian Barber, The Fabric of the Cosmos by Brian Greene, In Search of Time, The Science of a Curious Dimension by Dan Falk, and Sense and Goodness Without God by Richard Carrier. Thanks for watching.